who is who is our provider, our king, the one who gives. So let's sing it about that. Come on. I know you know this. When upon life's billows you are tempest-tossed, when you are discouraged thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one. And it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. On the second. Are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly. And you will keep singing as the day. That's my favorite line. Here we go. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God has on the third. When you look at others with their lands and gold, that's bad. Think what Christ has promised you, his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings, see what God had done. And on that last, here we go. So amid the conflict, whether great or small, do not be disheartened, God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you to your journeys in amen. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God had done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Amen. Count your many blessings, see what God has done. Amen. Would you be seated? Pastor. All right. Welcome you tonight. Thank you for being here. Pray. Prayer meeting, those of you that are online as well as those of you that are in the great hall. If you would like to share a prayer request, if you're online, go ahead and do that. We'd love to hear it, see it, um, and pray for you tonight. I will be praying uh, for you later, if not in this room, then later on tonight in my room at my house. So tonight we're going to be looking at the name Jehovah Jireh, the Lord provides, one of my favorite names of God. I think if we were to ask people, what are the two probably most prominent, two or three people think of Jehovah Shalom, the Lord is peace, Jehovah Rophe, the God who heals, and then this one, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides, provides our every need. And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. Um, So if you have a prayer request, and also you guys here in the room, if you think of something that you need the Lord to provide you, then I want you to be thinking about that. We'll pray about that. And we can also, uh, here's a thought I had about tonight uh, before we read the scripture is not only, Lord, meet my needs and and provide for me, but think about it like this, Lord, would you use me as you provide for another person? You see what I'm saying? It's not just being, our needs being met, but could God use us to be the answer to somebody's prayer and God provides for them, but we're the conduit through whom he makes the provision. Does that make sense? So that's what I'm thinking about tonight is us being used by the Lord to help other people uh, be an answer to their prayer. So here's the scripture I want to read. It's Genesis 22, 13, and 14. Now, Sunday, we're going to read almost the whole chapter. I, you, can't, you can't tell the story of Abraham willing to sacrifice his son, Isaac, 
without the whole context. Now tonight, I'm just going to share a couple of verses with you, but to do it justice on Sunday morning, we'll read verses 1 through 18, and um, there's a lot of uh, our media guys, thank y'all, I don't know if y'all have seen the manuscript or not, there's a lot of points and there's a lot of extra scriptures, and so it's going to be fun. That could translate, Ross, into a longer sermon, so if that happens, you know, y'all hang in there, don't take too many naps on me, or at least don't let me see you. And, uh, but this, this passage of Scripture, it's just phenomenal. I'm, you know, Charles Haddon Spurgeon said, uh, take your text, whatever your text is, and make a beeline to the cross. And some texts are just much easier to do that, and, and this is one of them. In the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you, where this happens, <laughs> it's just phenomenal. Where he raises his hand to sacrifice his son, Isaac. Of course, you know the story. Well, let's, let's look at it quickly. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns, okay? Right in the middle of him about to take his son's life. And the angel of the Lord said, stop. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah Yireh, or we call it Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. As it is to this day, in the mount of the Lord, Mount Moriah, if you read the whole context, it says Mount Moriah, uh, it shall be provided. Mount Moriah is the same place where David went and bought from Aranu, the Jebusite, the piece of property that he could uh, have the temple built, right? And Abraham, I mean, uh, David didn't build it, he collected it, and then Solomon built it, and it's on that same Mount Moriah where in the mount of the Lord, it will be provided. All those animal sacrifices for the, the remission of sins in the, in the Old Testament system, right? Well, my, my, my. Guess what else happened on that very side? The cross. And that's the very same place. On the Mount Moriah, Jerusalem, Calvary, it is provided. And aren't you glad that Jesus died one time? And we don't have to make these sacrifices for sins or keep all these laws. And we could just have that relationship with him. And so that's what we're going to talk about on Sunday, and I am, might be just a little bit excited uh, to preach to preach on this. The Lord uh, will provide. So Alex is going to pray for us in a moment. He's going to have some scripture for us, and then I appreciate um, after that, Tom, Tom Collier's got a couple of verses he'll read to us. And if you'll listen as we, and, and Dava will be reading and, and sharing with us from Matthew, each one of these scriptures deals with God being our provider. And if you'll read closely or listen closely as the scriptures are being read, you, you can hear it. You can hear the theme of the provision of God uh, for us. And so I just want to begin with prayer. Let me, let me just start us with prayer. And Alex, you just come on and lead us. Lord, we thank you today. Thank you, God, that you are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord <clears throat> who provides our every need, God's spiritual, physical, uh, emotional, mental, financial, in our families, whatever our needs are, God, you are a, uh, a God that meets uh, those needs according to your supply, God, according to your riches. Thank you, God, and we praise you for that. So, Lord, we just invite your presence among us tonight as we sing about you as we already have, as we pray to you, as we read your word that you've given to us. We pray that the Holy Spirit of God would just... Meet with us, encourage us, convict us, guide us through our prayer meeting tonight. Lord, I pray that it be a sweet time of prayer. I pray it be a focused prayer as we focus, Lord, our prayers and our, our thoughts, God, upon you being the God that meets our needs. Jehovah Jireh, uh, the Lord who, who makes provision for us. God, thank you that, oh my goodness, Lord, uh, what you prevented Abraham doing to his son, God, you did to your son so that we could be forgiven. And Lord, we will for eternity praise you for that and try to wrap our minds around that great act of sacrifice uh, when the Holy One of God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, without blemish, without spot, slain from the foundation of the world, Jesus, when you came to that cross and laid your life down for us so that we could be forgiven, the Lamb of God, uh, slain so that we could be cleansed. God, we praise you, Lord. You are... God, if we think about, it, Lord, if you would do that for us, God, you do anything for us. You can do anything for us. You can meet whatever we might think is small or minimum or trivial, Lord, and we think, well, 
Maybe the Lord's not as concerned about that because he's already met my biggest need. Lord, thank you that you're concerned with all those needs. So I just want to encourage us tonight as we're praying that whatever your need is, that Jehovah Jireh, he loves you and he's going to make provision for you. Now he's going to do it in his time, okay? And he's going to do it in his way. But aren't you glad tonight that you have a God that cares for you that much? The hairs on your head are numbered. Uh, all the stars have a name. He counts all the grains of sand on the seashores. That omniscient, awesome God is God. That's you, and that's who we're praying to tonight. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you. Lord, please inhabit our prayers tonight, God. May they be uh, just a sweet-smelling aroma to your, uh, to your heart, God, and to your face. I pray that you would meet our needs tonight, God. I know all of us, Lord, we, we come tonight. Some are coming with heavy hearts, and some are coming, Lord, maybe with and very de definitive, definite things, God, were there. Like, Lord, we really need you to come through. And God, we really need you to speak. Or God, we need you to act. And thank you, Lord, that we as your children can ask you that, God, knowing that when we ask anything according to your will, God, you hear us and you grant it to us. And we thank you and we praise you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Alex. The scripture we are going to read and pray today is Psalm, 8, Psalm 84, Psalms 84, 10 through 12. For a day in your court is better than a thousand. I would rather be a, be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold. From the, uh, withhold from those who walk in, uh, uprightly. O oh, Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. And as we are about to pray, as the, as the way the word starts, it's an active choice that we make. I mean, that's what the psalmist says. I will dwell in the house of the Lord than in the tents of the wickedness. So it's not a one-time choice alone. It's an everyday choice as we make. And let's pray, Lord, that he would give us the courage, wisdom, strength, and understanding to make that choice in every day, every moment of our lives. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor, O Lord. Father, we come to you with heart full of adoration, O Lord. And Father God, the heaven and earth are your, the armaments of your hands, O Master. The wonderful work of your hands, O Lord. Even what we witnessed the, earlier this week, the whole eclipse and everything, oh Lord, it's a tiny fragment of your glory, your beauty, and your splendor, oh Lord. We, we, we worship you, O oh Master. And Father God, who, what is man that you're mindful of him, O oh Lord? Father God, you, you granted us the salvation. Father, we praise you. We thank you, Lord. And as we read today, oh Master, Father God, you lead and guide our choices of everyday life, oh Master. And you have kept, oh Lord, a tent, tent of righteousness, oh Lord, tent of your presence, oh Master. And Father God, we praise you, we thank you, we glory for you for that, oh Master. Give us a heart to actively seek that, oh Lord. Actively seek that in our life, in our, in our words, in our deeds, in our thoughts, in our sight, and in everything, oh Master. Help us to actively seek, O oh Lord, for no good thing you will withhold, O oh Master, from your people, O oh Lord. And Father God, those who seek your presence, those who are in your tents, O oh Lord. And Father God, you will, you are a sun and shield, O oh Master. And Father God, you are a sun and shield. And we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you, we honor you for that, O oh Master. And Father God, blessed are we, O oh Master, who trust in you. Blessed are we who trust in you, Lord. And Father God, you are the provider of our life, O oh Master. Everything that we have, O oh Master, whether it is our dwelling or whether it is our life or whether this world. And Father God, the sky, as you asked Job, O oh Master, Job, where were you when I stretched the sky in its place? When I, when I said the waters of the beaches in its realms, Job, where were you? And Father God, this evening, we worship you, we adore you. And Father God, for who you are and what you have done for us and what you have provided for us and above everything that you have provided. Father God, we thank you, we adore you for the salvation that you have given to us, O Master. It did not come cheap, as, oh, cheap O Lord. And Father God, at the, blood of, at the cost of the blood of your Son, you redeemed us, O Lord. And wholehearted, with whole heart of thanks, O Lord, this evening we come together as a family 
to worship you, O Master. May your name alone be glorified. May your name alone be honored. Not just the one-time decision of our salvation, but Father God, every day decision, as we read in the Psalms, I read in Psalms 84 today, through in and through every day decision, we will honor you, we will worship you, and we will adore you. In Jesus' most precious name I pray. Lead us in a prayer of confession. Uh, first, these two verses. Uh, I don't usually think of these verses when I'm, when you're talking about confession, but uh, make, they make a lot of sense. It says, And without faith it's impossible to please God, for whoever draws near to God must believe that he exists and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And then in 17... By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered Isaac, and he who had received the promises was in the act of offering up his only son, of whom he had said, Through Isaac your, shall your offspring be. He considered that God was even able to raise him from the dead, from which figure to be speaking, he had received him back. I think it's interesting that the word says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. It doesn't say... Without obedience, it's impossible to please God. I'm usually thinking a confession of disobedience. I'd have to confess that all disobedience comes from a lack of faith, right? It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. He didn't say by obedience that Abraham offered. It's by faith he offered because he knew the promise is going to be kept. Even if, had anybody ever been raised from the dead at that point? I don't think so, but Abraham believed it. So let, let me lead us in prayer. Oh, Father, we just, um, we just thank you that you are good. Father, we know that you're Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. Uh, it is very true, but, Father, sometimes we don't act like that is true. So, Father, we just ask that you strengthen our faith uh, so that we enact on it. Uh, Father, we don't believe that you'll pour out um, blessings on us. Therefore, we don't tithe. Father, we, we don't believe that you'll give us an abundant life, a life eternal, not just in the world and the age to come, but in this life. Therefore, we don't work hard at uh, putting to death the deeds of the flesh, Father, whether it's... Uh, sexual or whether just overeating or all these things, Father, that um, that we would work on more, Father, if we realize the life that uh, is, is waits in store for us if we were to work at it, Father. And Father, there's just so many relationships that um, uh, that would be so much better if we um, gave them over to you, Father. Because you said, that your son said that if we gave up any relationship in this world, that there's not dozens and dozens of relationships that come in this world and the world to come, Father. So, Father, I just pray that you would just help us to believe, uh, not just to, to obey, but to believe in all of your promises, Father. It's interesting that your word says that without faith it's impossible to please God, but we must believe that you exist but that you're good, that you're a rewarder, Father. We don't need to serve you. You serve us. Help us to believe that, Father. Help us to believe that all the promises you give are all true. They ju we just have to wait on them. Just be faithful in them. And thank you, Father, because you forgive us for all our confessed sins, Father, even those of unbelief. And we know that um, when we do... You're faithful to cleanse us and faithful to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, even the, the sins of unbelief, Father. So thank you in advance, Father, for doing that even right now. In Jesus' name, amen. I get to pray a prayer of thanksgiving um, in our scriptures from Matthew. Um, 
And it's not one I usually uh, think about in Thanksgiving either. I felt a little pointed at me, a little bit, Pastor, about the worry thing here. <laughs> so I was like, hmm, what's this mean? No. <laughs> it's from Matthew 6, 26 through 33. It says, look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his stature? I'd be a giant by now. So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon, in all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Now, if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Let's pray. Father God, there is none like you. In all the earth, there is none like you. Your love is unfathomable. Thank you that when we fail you, you are quick to forgive us, and that you are merciful and gracious to us, Lord. Forgive us. Forgive me when my first reaction to stress and anxiety is worry. Lord, we can entertain worry like an old friend for coming for dinner. So forgive us for our lack of unbelief, our lack of trust in your word. You say you will provide for us. In Proverbs 10 this morning, you say you will not let the godly go hungry and that you will shower them with blessings. Thank you for the reminder that you provide for every need. Thank you for the blessings that you've bestowed upon us as a church and individually. We recognize that every gift is from you. Every blessing comes from you alone. Thank you for your faithfulness in every situation. Thank you for the hope that we have. Thank you for the hope that we have in you. And that alone should give us reason for joy. Thank you that in our darkest nights, you are light. Thank you that you are always with us and that you will never leave us. That is a promise that we can take to the bank. Thank you for your incredible sacrifice so that we may have eternal life. Lord Jesus, help us to be like you. You who obeyed the Father without complaint. Help us to be grateful in all circumstances. Help us to trust you in all circumstances. Renew our faith and our gratitude daily. Lord, we love you. We need you. We give you all praise, all thanks, all glory for you alone. Only you are worthy of that praise. It's in the name of every name, above every name. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's sing this song of praise. The mystery of the cross I cannot come. The agonies of Calvary You, the perfect Holy One Crushed your Son Who drank the bitter cup Reserved for me Your blood has washed away my sin Jesus, thank you the Father's wrath completely satisfied. Jesus, thank you. 
once your enemy, but now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. I think thanksgiving for the believer will always lead us to Calvary, lead us to the cross. Let's continue to sing of that sacrifice. By your perfect sacrifice, I've been brought near. Your enemy, you've made your friend. Pouring out the riches of your glorious grace. Your mercy and your kindness know no end. Your blood has washed away my sin jesus thank you the father's wrath completely satisfied jesus thank you once your enemy now seated at your table jesus thank you oh jesus I want to live for you. Sing that to him. Lover of my soul, I want to live for you and you alone. Lover of my soul, I want to live. washed away my sin Jesus thank you the Father's wrath completely satisfied Jesus sing your blood your blood has washed away my sin Jesus thank you the Father's wrath completely satisfied Jesus thank you once your enemy now seated at your table, sing it again, once your enemy, now seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. So easy to thank you, oh God, so wonderful, because once your enemy, but now seated Seated at your table, Jesus, thank you. Worthy Lord Jesus, thank you. Amen. Would you be seated, church? So I would like for us to pray um, for this Sunday, and we'll pray for Danny for his preaching, and we'll pray for that we have, um, that all who will just come and hear a good word from him. Um, so as I was looking at Genesis 22, and um, we see that the Lord was calling to Abraham, and he had to call for him a second time, as you can see this. Um, but Abraham did come through with his faith, and he answered him. He said, um, he knew, he answered, he said, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So he was reassuring his son as they walked up together. Um, somehow Abraham knew that, God would provide, God would carry, and just, um, 
he knew somehow that the that he would provide this life with his son that they would continue on so um anyway just wanted to understand this a little bit more but let's go ahead and just pray lord jesus um, we come now as we gather in your house this sunday we pray that we'll hear a good word from you lord we pray for danny as he uh, provides the message that you'll speak through him and that you'll give him boldness and um, um, just that he will know what to say with his discernment and that he's always listening to you, Lord Jesus. We're so thankful. We're so thankful for this church. We're so thankful for Danny and his family. Um, we love you, Lord, and we pray for all those who come to hear a word from you. Uh, we pray that you'll open up their hearts and that they'll listen. Um, thank you, Lord Jesus, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll be honest, I was looking at a picture of the children in children's ministry. I'm supposed to be praying. I was praising Jesus. We were just praising the Lord for all the kids up there. Um, so praise the Lord, <laughs> right? What? Yeah. My wife, she's a help to me. So we're looking at uh, a scripture Sunday, but we also want to look ahead and think, of course, of what God is doing um, for us, our needs as a church. But to finish out strong, you think of discipleship, you think of um where people should be in their giving, being obedient. Um, we've given the Lord 100% of what, what we have, but he asked for us to give back 10. And so uh, we want to pray that our church family would be mature in their faith, right? So let's pray for that as we think of a strong uh, end to our year of giving. Would you pray for people? Don't just think of a number. <laughs> Don't think of a budget that we want to reach. But think and pray for our people. So whether that's your own heart, um, but I do know there are people in our church that are growing. They're learning what it looks like to give. And we're hearing those good stories, but let's pray for opportunities to have those conversations and for the Lord to speak into their lives. Would you agree with me in that? Lord, I thank you for that. Um, your plan is best, and we want that. God, we desire to follow your lead, your design, your perfect will. And Lord, I recognize in my own heart and mind, Lord, I make plans, but oh God, you're the one that makes uh, king's hearts move. <laughs> you're the one that actually has a design and purpose, and Lord, we submit to that. Father, in the life of our church, we know our need for, for you to intervene in people's financial issue or their daily struggle, things that we bring to you, our supplications. Lord, we know that you need to intervene. And even in the life of our church, would you grow in maturity givers? Would you grow in faith and in trust in you, your people? What is we disciple people and walk with them, help them to see um, from example, Father, our leaders, and I thank you that our leaders uh, are leading out, and there are many in this room that lead out in faithfulness and giving. But Lord, as we think of your, your being the one that holds your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against your church, we recognize that we need to be good stewards of what you've given, but Lord, that you've given us a commission, and it's to reach the lost. So as we look at our funds and we're sending those, just even writing checks today that are going to missionaries and partners, what how precious that we as a church are impacting the nations. Would you keep that in our hearts and minds, Lord, as we give? Lord, we're being faithful, we're being obedient, and it is an act of worship. But Lord, what you allow us to be a part of, it is a pleasure, it is a joy we get to see tastes of your kingdom here on earth. And Lord, I thank you for that. 
Lord, we also recognize uh, what responsibility that the previous church put on this church to take care of this building. And so would you allow us as we continue to make decisions and we're pursuing you, Father, to pursue good stewardship and to look to the future church. Would you help us, Lord, to finish the year strong in such a way, nor that it would benefit your church and your vision that you've given to this leadership. And Lord, our commission to be able to do that with honor and to do that in a way that when we stand before you, we could say, Lord, with, with no regret, I praise you. Lord, you've given us a mandate, and we've tried to carry that out the best that we can. Lord, we do put it before your feet, knowing that you're God. Lord, as I pray, you're the one that makes our steps happen. Allow us to trust you. Allow us as a church body uh, to trust you. But Lord, those who don't realize the benefit of sacrifice, would you make them and do this in a way that honors you and glorifies you, would you give us opportunity to help them to live in that uncomfortableness so that they trust you? For those who are only trusting in themselves, would you lead them to trust you, O oh God, and allow your shepherds, allow these teachers, allow those in this room who are making disciples, allow us opportunity to speak into them, we pray in Jesus' name, because it's for you and you alone. Amen. All right, I get to uh, the privilege of praying for uh, Connect Church, so I'm going to pray for that. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just thank you, God, so much, Lord, for um, just being able to come together with, uh, with believers and being able just to, um, to bring our prayers before you. And Lord, I just thank you so much, God, for Great Hills and how they have felt uh, um, that they are supposed to come alongside and, and do church planning, and I'm so grateful for Connect Church and for the people at Liberty Hill. And Lord, just thank you for that um, community of believers. Lord, I just pray, God, just that um, we will continue just to grow in, um, in our faith and, and with each other. And then also just uh, that more and more people would come to know you. I pray that we would know how to minister to this particular uh, community up there. And I know, God, just as we have a plan and purpose for this, this area, for Great Hills, may we also be able to, Lord, just to hear and um, to know what you would have us to do in that area so that more and more people can know just about you and who you are and how much you love humanity and you desire to have a relationship with us and you have given us the most incredible, precious gift to, of your son and um, help us to be intentional and in sharing Get, look for opportunities um, to meet needs. And, um, Lord, I just thank you, God, for those, like I said, that are there and that are willing to come and serve some double duty in, in the mornings and in the evenings and others that are just uh, new to the community and they're just right there. And um, I just, again, just uh, thank you, God, for those you have called. And um, may we just continue just to honor you and to love you, serve you. I do thank you so much for... Um, for Leighton and Danielle, and um, Lord, just for being with them, watch over them, and continue to, and thank you for Lori, and just how they serve, and then may we come alongside, and others come alongside, and and help, and thank you for just the opportunity to be able to even to minister, I think, about to Santa Rita uh, School, and, and Lord, just, um, I think that they know, God, that we do really care, and I think that's the most great thing that we can do as believers, is, is to, um, to share your love in tangible ways, and I pray that you just help us to do that, whether it's our neighbor or um, community or like giving, whatever it is, God, that you are honored, Lord. God, we love you. Thank you so much for your son, Jesus, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So in the morning, these tables will be filled with uh, people from nations all over the world. How many nations, Patty? 13, 14 different nations. And they will be watching the Jesus film. Uh, so 
the great thing is that they will all hear the Jesus film in their native language. And that's, that's going to happen. I mean, so there's, there's lots of uh, technical stuff that's having to go on for this to happen. And we don't want there to be any interference. Can you imagine that there might be some interference? Do you think so? I would think so too. And so <clears throat> imagine these people have been coming for how many how many weeks, uh, Patty, for since the fall. Yeah, so uh, they have been loved on and the material that we use to teach guides them towards the word of God, guides them toward the truth of salvation. But I want you to think for a moment, how long did it take you to get it from here to here and for you to actually come to Christ? Did it take you more than a year, two years, four years, five years, 30 years? So we've had these people for what, eight months or so, and they're coming from, many of them coming from non-Christian backgrounds, and so we're, we're praying now in these next few moments that the truth of the Word of God will penetrate their hearts in this very unusual setting with this powerful film through which maybe millions of people have come to Christ from watching this film. But we don't want any interference. We want all the technical things to work properly in the morning. And we want their hearts to be broken over their sinfulness. And I don't know about you, but uh, it took me a while to get there. So just... Think about the intensity of the prayer in these next few moments. So join me as we pray for people to be saved tomorrow right here. Lord Jesus Christ, uh, your word tells us that our struggle is not against flesh and blood and that the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of this world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Father, you know the strongholds of lies and deceit that have been uh, taught and learned in every heart that will be present in the morning. And we, we want to come to you tonight praying that you would guide our prayers that these strongholds would be broken. And Lord Jesus Christ, uh, our enemy comes against us with lies and deceit, but we come against him tonight in prayer. In the name of the Lord God Almighty, the God of the armies of heaven, knowing that the word of God is living and active and sharper than any double-edged sword that Tomorrow that that sword will penetrate and with divine power demolish every stronghold of deceit and lies that has been built up so that the truth of your love, your mercy, your grace uh, for all people of all nations uh, will be understood and believed and received. So, Father, we pray for this, that, uh, that you would grant that the enemies that rise up against this uh, would be defeated, and that no weapon that is forged against this teaching and truth in this film tomorrow would be able to prevail. And so, Father, we ask that you be the shield and defender that you strengthen faith, that you empower understanding, and that you save people tomorrow right here in this room. Save them 
rescue them from hell and bring them into your glorious salvation and kingdom. Uh, Lord, would you do that? We ask you to do what only you can do in every heart and life tomorrow. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all for helping out, leading in prayer. i got a couple more things I want to share with you before we close out with prayer in, in our uh, tables or at our tables. Uh, thank you, Jan, for praying for me. I, I, when you were reading that verse, I, I was thinking about that. I was getting excited about Sunday because as he was telling uh, his son, Isaac, we're going to come back. How? What faith? I'm going to go sacrifice you, but God has the power to raise you from the dead. I, Tom was alluding to that. Hadn't really thought about that, Tom, about how many resurrections had we seen. I mean, good night. He knew God had given him a promise, okay? So not even death could nullify that promise. Who needs to hear that tonight? If God's given you a promise. Nothing can nullify that. Nothing can overcome that or preempt that or, or, or force it into not happening. So thank you for, for that. Becky Dean is in the house. It's just so good to see Becky. Yay! Yeah. I don't know when I started calling you by your first and last name. But that's, that's the only, I've always called her. I just, she's Becky Dean. So uh, some people think, well, what's her last name? Well, it's her name, Becky Dean. And little Kate and Russ, so happy for them. And everybody's healthy, doing well. And we praise the Lord for um, Becky and her ministry here. It's our uh, ministry and, and missions and does a great job. And uh, so it's just good to see her here with us and praying with us. I've seen some of your requests online. God bless you. I know um, Harrison has shared with you a little bit, and we're going to be praying. Uh, I've read a number of those requests uh, just a moment ago, and we'll be praying for you. And, and you all be thinking about the, uh, the prayer that, that I mentioned earlier about Jehovah Jireh providing for, for you and what you might be sensing that the Lord could do in your life um, tonight. Uh, one thing here that I've made a note of is be praying for uh, the nation of Haiti, if y'all would continue to join me in that prayer. Uh, there is a lot of things going on on the political uh, realm involving the nation of Kenya, the nation of Haiti, and our own Fred Upright is directly involved in, in that in a very strategic, uh, political, spiritual way, and it's just miraculous some of the things that, that God is doing. I was talking to him on the phone today, and I can't tell you some of the things that he told me, and I'm just like blown away what I'm hearing God uh, doing there. As y'all know, Haiti is, is, is heading in a bad way. I mean, uh, the guy who is, who's kind of the self-proclaimed leader has publicly shared with the nation that he appealed to Satan for help, that he is getting his energy, his strength from the evil one to set the, the prisoners free. And so he's gone in and, and set free about 6,000 uh, hardened criminals and inmates and just ruling with uh, just atrocities. You know, and that's what you get when the devil leads, right? He steals, he kills, he destroys and rapes and murders, and it's just horrible. So the nation of Kenya, coupled with the nation of the United States, has a plan to change things. And um, you're going to be seeing this in the news, and it's you're going, to, you're going to be blown away what's going to happen and that some of our very people are going to be very instrumental in that. I, I'm still just kind, of, just kind of blown away with it and the people who are involved in this. Oh, my goodness. So please pray. That's what they're asking. Uh, the, pre, the president and his wife are asking us, please, please pray. Not the, unfortunately, not our president in America. He wouldn't do that. Uh, but the president of Kenya is asking us to please, please pray. His wife met with Fred Upright and a delegation from uh, America and Haiti. And for three and a half hours, the president's wife, Fumi, she kind of reminds me of somebody like you, prayed for three and a half hours with uh, Fred and with a few other people to, to overtake the country, to take the country over. And I know this is online, but whatever that looks like. So I'm, I'm serious, y'all. This is big. This is big, big. So let's be praying uh, that God, God does what he does. And so they are, they're saying they're sending the, the, the angels in first. And the angels are, they're saying, are the prayers of God's people. 
They're sending in the prayers, and after that will come some other things. And so things are, it's pretty amazing what's, what's going to happen. I'm praying. I'm praying that anytime somebody wants to remove somebody that worships Satan and put somebody in there that worships Jesus, I'm praying for that. And so I'm praying for that nation. And so I um, hope I hadn't said too much. So, um, so while I was in college, I'm going to close with a story, and then we're going to pray, Okay. My favorite professor was a man by the name of Dr. Larry Allums. He was an uh, English professor. His, uh, English was my minor. Religion was my major. Everything he offered in English, I took it. Uh, everything. Creative writing, Shakespeare, philosophy, anything. that I don't know. I just love this guy. I don't even think he was a believer. I'm pretty sure he wasn't a, a believer. But I, I just, he was brilliant, and I learned how to write. I learned how to communicate from him. And so, anyhow... I know Christian college, you think everybody's supposed to be <laughs> believers. I get it. But he, we, during our Shakespeare class, uh, about two or three weeks, we kept coming to class, and he kept saying, okay, let's talk about what y'all read, and it was crickets. We didn't read it. We would not read the play, so he's the professor, and he's like, we don't have anything to talk about. He said, I'm not going to talk for an hour about what you should read. Next week, y'all come back, you read this play, and we'll talk about it. We all came back late in his crickets. We just looked at him. We were like, I'm not reading Shakespeare. I can't even hardly understand him. Why would I read it? You know, and he goes, okay, come with me. And we thought, what's he going to do? Hurt us? You know, he's like, Put, get all your belongings. Y'all are coming with me. We're going for a walk. And we're like, okay. So, you know, Christian college, he can't do much to us, you know. And so he walked us over to the library. And for the next 16 weeks, he would put the play on the television, and we would have to watch it on TV, and uh, then we would be able to discuss it. And I just thought, that's, that's Dr. Allums. He was just very, very creative. So, so here's what we're going to do. Here's how this relates to our prayer ministry. We are going to make some changes in our prayer ministry on Wednesday night. Tom, you were kind of alluding to in, on an email thread today, wouldn't it be great if we had as many people in prayer meeting as we did on Sunday morning? Well, that's... I think that's going to happen, but it's not going to happen on Wednesday night. So we're going to move our prayer meeting to Sunday morning, and it's going to look a little different. Our Connect Group classes, uh, Billy, you do a great job at this. You, we're going to need your example for the others to let out a little early, and everybody can come to prayer meeting. We're going to have prayer meeting on Sunday morning at 1025, so I'm going to pull a, a Dr. Allums on them, okay? <laughs> if they can't come or won't come, whatever. I'm not judging, on Wednesday night, then you say, well, Pastor, do you really think it's that important? That's how important it is. We have got to get our church to pray. And so when we all come in there on Sunday morning, 1025 to 1050, um, i got to give credit where credit's due. This Jeff, Jeff thought of this. So if y'all like it, tell me. If you don't like it, tell Jeff. <laughs> That's wrong. But he just bears this burden with me. He's like, let's, let's try this. And let's just, we'll have, it'll be very similar to this as far as we'll just be, we won't do as much of the music um, or, you know, the, I won't be teaching, preach. it would just be 30 minutes, 25, 30 minutes of just focused prayer up there at the altar, people around the altar and just praying and praying. And, and what if the prayer goes over to 11 o'clock, Tom? You think that's okay? You know, if it goes into 11.30, if that okay, that's okay. I mean, so we're going to really... And so Wednesday nights in the fall will be more discipleship. We're going to be looking at doing some discipleship things on Wednesday nights. So we're hoping to start this June the 2nd, okay? So we're going to continue praying as we would through May 22nd on Wednesday nights. And y'all know we would stop anyhow for the summer because that's, that's what we've been historically doing over the last three years as we've had. And let me just say, y'all. I thank you. I'm very, very grateful to God for you. You have been faithful to pray, and it just, it just means the world to me. I have pled and begged and asked and asked people to come. Please, please pray. This means the world to me, and you have, and I just thank you. So I'm excited. I'm excited about how this is going to expand and how others are going to be just come in, and we're just going to be calling out to God. We're going to be praying for needs like this. We're going to pray for the service Pray for Jeff and the worship team. Pray for me. Pray for all these needs, ESL, all these things. Um, Becky, for all these missions. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So, 
So at your tables, if you would, just if you have a special need, Jehovah Jireh, I need you to pray for me for this. And maybe it's health or finances or maybe you're just really burdened about something in our church or maybe tomorrow with the ESL uh, or whatever it is. That would be awesome. So when you're finished praying at your table, uh, you're, you're, you're dismissed. Thank you. Uh, this is usually a time uh, for us, uh, while people behind me are spending some time sharing about what's going on uh, in their life, praying for one another as they share some of those things, offering a similar opportunity for you. And if you're with someone, I want to encourage you to lean into that and take that time. You can always come back uh, to our stream uh, at any time, even if it's not while we are uh, streaming live. Uh, that's something that is part of a benefit of that experience. Um, and so I don't want to interrupt that time, if that is what you were doing with this time. Uh, but for the last few minutes with us together, the rest of us, I want to do something a bit uh, unprecedented with this last slot of our time. And that is, um, instead of using this time to pray over the requests, which we will uh, pray for those requests throughout the week, uh, we always do send them to us, whether it's now through this hour window or any other time that's convenient for you. We love uh, actively praying for you, even if you are not local uh, to our church here in Austin. But what I want to do um, is ask you uh, to pray um, on behalf of every everyone involved in our online ministry. We enjoy um, hosting this time routinely for you and making it um, an opportunity to, to actively serve you, um, uh, be alongside you in prayer, uh, asking God uh, to go before us with everything that we're doing uh, here. Um, and give us the wisdom in making great judgment with what the future of our online ministry is. So as the shift um, of our prayer service will uh, inevitably move Sunday morning, um, that leaves a big question with what we do uh, with our midweek uh, online uh, prayer audience. And our desire is to continue to offer something uh, experientially for you that is rich and continues to give you opportunity to give consideration uh, to the Lord, the way he's working in your life in the middle of your week, but again, still primarily focused on just spending time in prayer. Uh, so my request is, will you actively pray for me and everyone else involved uh, in the ideation of that in determining what uh, that looks like? Um, beyond that, beyond praying for us, um, if this time has been uh, particularly um, impactful uh, to you, we would love to know uh, how, how that has been the case. Um, Maybe that's through a story, maybe that's um, just in sharing that this is something that is impactful uh, to you. Uh, it's something we want to sustain for the future, but are exploring how we can do that. And so part of what can help us in that is just uh, making your voice heard and knowing uh, how we can continue to serve you, those who have been so faithfully showing up uh, to this uh, routinely. So again, lastly, please um, spend some time in prayer um, just as we consider and ultimately get excited about how we can make this experience uh, even more specifically catered uh, to you who are not able to be here on a Wednesday evening to make that more of a rich experience uh, for everyone. And if you have ideas, if you have feedback, we would love uh, to receive that, uh, even have some of that conversation uh, with you. Uh, so please uh, pray uh, for us as we explore those things. Uh, I want to leave you just with a quick prayer, uh, just uh, generally over some of the requests you've received. Uh, if I don't mention uh, something that you have sent in uh, through this hour, throughout this week, uh, rest assured uh, we are still continuously and actively praying for you. Uh, and so please continue to send those our way uh, so we can care for you in that way and actively continue to pray for you. Uh, so let's spend uh, our last few minutes together uh, in prayer. Lord, You, you truly are, uh, Lord, uh, Jehovah Jireh. You have not only provided past tense, uh, Lord, but uh, you have used these events uh, to make it overwhelmingly clear that this is a part of your character that, uh, like the rest, will be sustained and will last forever. Lord, you have been our provider and in this moment, you are our provider. And with every need that we have in the future, Lord, according to your will, 
from the great purpose of glorifying you in the gospel. Uh, Lord, you will continue to be our provider. And so we praise you and we thank you, Lord, uh, that there's so much uh, rich uh, scripture uh, that affirms and allows us to explore and understand, Lord, that this is something that you waveringly a part We can it takes the pain off uh, my shoulders, uh, Lord. And so uh, I know I personally am just uh, so thankful that that is such an important part of who you are. Uh, Lord, and I express this because uh, we need it to be true. Uh, Lord, our perception, uh, our ability to influence uh, what's immediately in front of us, uh, Lord, is so limited. Uh, but with your wisdom, uh, through the Spirit, uh, through your Spirit, Lord, through uh, just your guidance in our life and your will uh, to care for us and to be a provider for us. Uh, Lord, we know that you will bridge whatever gap uh, there is that needs uh, to be bridged. We can continue to walk uh, and live a life that, uh, through our actions and, and thoughts uh, and words, uh, continue uh, to glorify you and give more opportunity to be a part of your great commission. Um, uh, Lord, we pray. Um, for uh, Becky's uh, old teacher, uh, Shirley, and her passing, for Becky and for others that are in close relationship, uh, were in close relationship with this teacher, we ask that you uh, just give them peace in their mourning, uh, Lord, that, uh, that it would be overwhelming joy uh, more than anything as they reflect uh, and have great reverence for the impact that she made uh, in their life. Uh, Lord, would you just um, be with her friends and family. Uh, Lord, we also lift up Carol, just... Uh, just had a, a bit of a, a tough season just experiencing uh, some fallout and some some damage from um, from hail uh, Lord be us with all of these things there would be quick resolve uh, Lord and and that she would ultimately be guided through this to glorify you in the way that you again Lord provide for her as you provide uh, for all of us and we thank you for your continued faithfulness uh, to Adam as he continuously prays over his extensive list of requests he has, Lord, uh, continue to reveal yourself to him through that, uh, Lord, and give him wisdom and help him understand how his heart can be aligned with yours uh, through that um, as well. Uh, similarly, Lord, we uh, lift up uh, whatever undisclosed um, prayers, uh, Lord, that Gerald has shared. Um, again, uh, glorify, glorify yourself through that, reveal uh, yourself to him through that. Um, Lord, and uh, we also lift up um, Chris and June, Lord, that we ask for an opportunity and experience, uh, Lord, that would bring her to salvation, to make a, t a commitment to follow you for the rest of her days. Uh, and we also uh, pray for uh, Christine's um, brother, David, just um, that he would experience uh, effective healing um, uh, on the uh, back end of um, dealing with health complications, Lord. You just be with him, be with um, his family as you uh, nurse him uh, through that, as you provide people around him to nurse him uh, through that. Uh, but for any requests that we have received and not been able to go over at this time, uh, Lord, we just ask that you be with them, uh, have your hand involved in it, and glorify yourself through their circumstances, good uh, and bad. Uh, and Lord, I also just express thanks. Um, we're having an audience here that has built a community, um, even if they are not physically uh, here. Lord, I'm so just uplifted to see people praying for one another, whether or not uh, I'm here involved or not, Lord. And this is your church at work, and so we praise you for you being the foundation of that, guiding us to loving one another uh, through that, Lord. Uh, and may you continue to guide us uh, to continue to reflect um, just your design for the church. Uh, in this way. Lord, we love you, uh, we thank you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.